I agree with the choir. I could go on and on and on and on. Because he is so good. This is going to be a difficult day for me to preach because I'm so happy. When I just look and see the blessings of the Lord, my soul cries holy because he is so good. So thankful for all of his manifold blessings. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for all of those blessings for me. Grandmama used to say, I'm whooping you because I love you. Some of the things that I'm grateful for is the whoopings that my Heavenly Father gives me. Because it makes me better. A friend of mine sent me a message the other day. He says, uh, those that always think that they are right are really immature. But when you can admit that you're wrong, and I just throw this in, and God is right. That is truly a sign that you're growing up. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's go to Psalms 121. We'll read verse 1 and 2. I could just read part of verse 2. I would that you would take the time when you get home sometime this afternoon and read the entire 121st number of Psalms. It's not all that long. Uh, I realize that I'm on the clock when I stand up. Uh, I got to get you all out of here and keep you safe while you're in here. Not because I'm selfish, but because I care. Psalms 121, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And it reads, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes. Oh, he puts it in the form of a question, from where does my help come from. I, I, I agree that he should put it in a question uh, because so often we don't realize where our real help comes from. Verse 2 says, it answers that question and says, my help comes from the Lord. Who, who are you talking about? He's talking about the one who made heaven and earth. That's the word of God. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for an awareness of where our help comes from. Through your word today, we ask that you would grow us in awareness that we already have. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our subject for today, continuing to try and, 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 and get us 
to where we know what we mean when we say certain things. Today, what do we mean when we say my help comes from the Lord? My help comes from the Lord. We ought not just say things because somebody else said them. Somebody else could be lying. Somebody else might not know what they're talking about. So we ought to know for ourselves what we mean when we say certain things, especially in the church. We ought to know what we mean when we say, my help comes from the Lord. There's a story that I want to share with you uh, that I've shared with both of my sons, and I know both have shared with uh, the next generation after themselves. The, the story was shared uh, with the preaching class years ago while I was attending Dr. W. H. Brewster's seminary. Uh, the story goes that there was a man that had a son. The man instructed his son one morning after breakfast to go out into the yard and remove a great boulder that was uh, no longer needed in the yard. He could move it to the edge if necessary and leave it there, but just get it out of the way. As the son started out of the door, the father stopped him and said to him, son, don't forget to use all of your help. The son excitedly exited the house and labored until late in the afternoon to no avail. But finally, the son went inside and to tell his father that he was unable to move this great boulder. The son told his father that he had tried everything that he could think of and had not been able to move this large stone in the yard. The father simply asked him, son, uh, if have you used all of the help that you have at your disposal? He said, yes, Dad. Then the father asked him if he had asked him for help. The son said no. The father led his son out into the yard, and they proceeded to, sh to, to show the son how to take a small boulder and a pole and be able to leverage their weight against the large boulder, and it started to move. The father told his son to always remember that he was always there to help him. We have a heavenly father that is saying that very same thing to us today. Remember that you have a father that is always there to help you no matter what you're going through. No matter how big your problem may seem, we have a father that's bigger than any of our problems. Let's walk through the scripture. The word help is translated from the, the Hebrew word azar, A-Z-A-R. And it can be used with, the, with humans as the subject. Uh, you know how it is. I help you, you help me. But often it is used of God who gives help to us. God, in the right understanding of this verse, too often we thank God ought to work for us while we're sitting down. But that word help in the Hebrew meant that God assisted the Israelites in battle and, and even they, they, they fixed it so that they would remember it. Samuel called the place where God assisted Israel in battle, he called it a, the, that place El, 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 Ebenezer. You, you remember that's a name that pops up often during the Christmas season. And, and I'm not talking about the Scrooge. But hitherto, the Lord has helped us. And the psalmist affirms that our help is in the name of the Lord. Many of the psalms uh, praises 
uh, God, for he is the God who helps his people in their times of need. The psalmist understood that his, we, his help came from the Lord. And how often do we struggle with life's problems and forget that our help comes from the Lord. The Bible is overflowing with painful crises for help. Uh, we cry out in this day and age so often there's a, that, that there's a painful overflowing cry for help uh, from uh, so many individuals that are in need. While on a difficult uphill pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the psalmist that writes this to us, Psalms 51, uh, he, 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 he writes to remind us where does my help come from. Well, that's something that we ought to always remember. Suffering in despair and misery, we find Job wondering in Job 30 and 24, does not one in a heap of ruin stretch out his hand? and in disaster cry out for help. Job later acknowledged that I stand up in the assembly even and cry for help. You, you, ought, to, you ought to remember that, that, that you don't just come to church to, to be seen. You don't come out of, out of habit. You don't come out of tradition, but you ought to come to find some help. Job didn't wait until he was in privacy to cry out for help from the Lord. In other words, while he was still at church, he cried out for help. And to me, in the Lord's house is a good place to cry out for help. Don't worry about who's sitting on the pew next to you and how they might look at you. If you need help, you ought to, you ought to cry out to the one that's able to help you in whatever you're going through. <laughs> King David in Psalms 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. The Lord will hear your cry. I learned some years ago that, that there were times when grandmama and mama and daddy didn't want to hear my cry. Sometimes they were going through more than I was and, and they, they, they held what their needs were at a higher priority. You might have some close friends that you helped and stuck with through thick and thin, but, but you, you can't cry out to everybody all the time. If you, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not talking about somebody else. I'm just talking about me. If you come to me all the time, every time you speak to me, you crying or whining about something, after a while, I'm going to start turning the other way. But the Lord, he will never turn up death there. He will always incline unto you. He, 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 that incline means that he will bend over to get close to you. Not so he can hear you, but so that you know he hears you. That he heard your cry. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I remember grandmama saying a long time ago, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard my cry. And pitied my groan, long as I live and trouble rise, I will hasten to his throne. I, I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he pitied my groan. From deep in the realms of the dead, uh, I called for help. That's what Jonah says. He prayed from his underwater prison cell inside the belly of the great fish in Jonah chapter 2 verse 2 where where can I find help he asked where does my help come from and this is a universal appeal for help from within the heart of humanity uh, today things might be going pretty good I've got a Joe Biden at president but I guarantee you if if, if in 20 24, if we end up with another Trump, 
I, I'm going to cry out mightily unto the Lord. And it won't be my first time. I, I've been crying when we had a trump in office. And, and the Lord heard my cry. And pitied my groan. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Perhaps better than any other passage in the Bible, Psalms 21, 121 illuminates how God the all-powerful creator and ever-present protector is the only real and trustworthy source of help for humankind. This collective human call for help is proof that people need a savior. We are born lost in our sins according to Isaiah 59 and 2. But yet within the soul of every person, God has placed an awareness of lack, of need, of something more. I don't believe there's anybody in here this morning that feels that you got all you need. You might be content with all you have, but just a moment of thinking, you'll think of something else that you'd like to have. God has put within us this void, this need for something more. And, and it all leads us up to a story, another story that I learned, I heard at Dr. Brewster's. Uh, he told this story one afternoon about uh, the, it's a biblical story too, and I didn't know it at the time. He talked about how uh, th this group was building a temple. And they went along, uh, did well in finding stones to, to make the temple look good and beautiful. But then when they got close to the end, there was a spot up at the top most part. And they went near and far. They even tried to fashion with, with chisels a stone that would fit perfectly in that one spot to be able to finish the building could not be finished until they had put a stone in that spot. And then finally, the, the chief architect, uh, the, the builder, uh, noticed he pa finally paid attention to this old man that was standing around. He couldn't do much work, but what he could do, he would do it. And he noticed that this old man was always, he'd look up, and then he'd scratch his chin, and then he'd look over at the pile of rocks that had been, and stones that had been thrown aside because they were not useful. Then he'd look up, then he'd scratch his chin, and then he'd look back over at that pile of rejected stones. Then he'd look up, then he'd scratch his chin, and he'd look over again at that pile of stones that had been rejected, and, and finally the builder said, oh man, why are you looking up at that vacant spot up there, and then scratching your chin, and then looking over at that pile of stones that had been rejected because they didn't fit? That empty space, that void that's in their life, that, 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 that temple had a, had, a, had a void spot, an empty spot. And all of us are the temple of God, and without Jesus Christ, we have an empty spot. The old man said, well, I'm looking over there because some while, a while ago, we, 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 we were not up there yet. But there was a stone that we just threw aside because we didn't see any use for it. And, and he said, I'd like to try that stone. They got that stone and they climbed the ladder and, and, and they heaved it over in that empty spot and it just fell perfectly in play. Jesus fits perfectly in our lives. It don't matter what you try to fill the void with. Jesus is the only one that fits perfectly. Yeah. 
deep inside. Uh, Jesus will feel that emptiness that we so often cry out for help. Our hearts cry out to God, rise up, come to our help. Redeem us from the, for, for the sake of your steadfast love. And when the psalmist offered the question, where does my help come from? He was not asking from a place of perplexity or doubt. No doubt he spoke in prayerful expectation. He trusted that God, the creator, was tirelessly watching over him sleeplessly uh, protecting him. You, you've read the Psalms. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. The sun shall not strike me down by day nor the moon by night. He's tirelessly watching over us. He's sleeplessly protecting us. He will not let our foot slip. He who watches over us will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. But sadly, but sadly, the human tendency is to look for help in all the wrong places. Somebody up here that, that have done like me, I, I, I look for help in the wrong places. And that's our tendency. My real purpose here today is to remind somebody where your help comes from so that you won't waste a lot of time looking for help in all the wrong places. We try to solve our own problems uh, under our own strength or according to the wisdom of the world. We phone our parents when we need someone to bail us out. We look to friends uh, for companionship or our spouse to satisfy the longing of our souls. We seek success and self-esteem from our careers. We turn to drugs and alcohol to fill the emptiness inside. We attempt to find happiness in even just uh, ways uh, uh, to cope by experimenting with everything this world has to offer. But all of these solutions fall short. What, do, what we need most is to cry out. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need you. Help me, Lord. Save me according to your unfailing love. Like the prophet Isaiah, we stand firm knowing that our help comes from the Lord. Or better yet, whom uh, it comes from. Uh, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. The psalmist acknowledged the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade on my right hand. And the sun won't strike me down during the day nor the moon by night. No matter what we face, day or night, the Lord stands over us. Uh, as a protective shield uh, through every trial and every storm in life God is our constant shelter and refuge uh, our good and loving Lord will protect us from every evil the Lord will keep us from all evil as well and and he will keep us alive forevermore Th this may have been used as an uh, 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 strange psalms that the pilgrims sang as they journeyed to Jerusalem to celebrate a feast. The leader of the company opened with verse 1 and 2, which are the first per in the first person, and the different people of the group answered him with verse 3 and 4, and so on. 
which are in the second person. The, the theme is God's protection over his people. The word keeps means to watch over. I, anybody in here that has, 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 I can say it this way, had some little sons or some little, I had two, I had two sons and, and I used to watch over them at night. I, I'd get up in the night, I don't know, for no reason at all, and, and I'd go and stick my head in their bedroom just to watch over them. There was a time when I used to work nights and, and get off work and, and, and get to the house before I started pulling my clothes off. I'd stick my head in their bedroom. I was watching over them. And God watches over us that same way. He watches over us. Safety is something about which the pilgrims would be especially concerned as they journeyed on the road through the hill country. A pilgrim could stumble and hurt himself, or someone might suffer a sunstroke, or, or on chilly nights or, 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 while camping out on their way up to Jerusalem, somebody uh, uh, could have a bad cold. There was always the possibility of robbers swooping down, but the message of the psalmist applies to God's pilgrims today and gives us the assurance that we need to journey in this life knowing that we've got a Savior. We've got a God that is our help. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I've got a Savior that knows what I need, knows when I need it, and know how to provide, has the resources to provide for all of my needs. I've got a Father that cares about me, that cares so much that one Friday on an old rugged cross, they hung him high and they stretched him wide. For you and me he died. Uh, they nailed nails in his hand. They, they drove the rivet through his feet and they pierced him in the side. That's showing us how much he cares about us. That how much he, we, we were sinking in sin and, 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 and he came to take care of us. He came to assist us, to get under that heavy load with us. And I'm so glad today that even though they, they, they crucified him on that old rugged cross, they took him down and they buried him like everybody else in a, in a tomb, but his tomb was borrowed because he would only need it for a few days. He was there all Friday night, all day Saturday. He was there all Saturday night. Somebody help me say, early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. And that's why, like the psalmist, I can say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, somebody help me say, joy, joy, unspeakable joy comes in the morning. It doesn't matter what's going on in this world. I'm not worried about it. I'm careful, but I'm not worried about it because I know that I have a peace that the world couldn't give and the world can't take away because Jesus rose with all power in his hand. I will always remember where my help comes from. If someone asks you when you leave here today, what do you mean when you say my help comes from the Lord? You ought to be able to tell them that all, of all of the, the miraculous things that the Lord has done in your life already, so many of them you've forgotten. I'm not the only one that forgets some things that the Lord has done for me. 
Here we are celebrating breast cancer and cancer month. The Lord has given us victories. And I had forgotten all about the brain tumor that he, he delivered me from. All I got to say now is, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he show up in your midnight hour? Won't he show up when your back is against the wall? Won't he show up when you don't know where you're going to make it from? Who's going to help you? Won't he show up when you don't have uh, uh, anything in the pantry to, to cook? Won't he show up and be bread for the hungry, water for the thirsty? If you've ever been in a hospital room, won't he show up in a hospital room? Won't he be a doctor to you? Won't he be a lawyer in a courtroom? Won't he be a way out of no way? My help comes from the Lord because he is my help. And all we've got to do is cry out to him and he will come see about us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We ask that you would continue to fortify our minds that we may know without a doubt, even when things don't look good to us, when it seems like there's no way out for us, help us to remember that we've got somebody to cry out to, and he will come and help us. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. The door of the church is open.